Welcome back to Twisted News, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're looking at two completely separate but equally strange cases, with the first revolving around a Boston police officer and his tragic death that has the two sides saying either his girlfriend did it or there's a police cover-up going on, and both sides are compelling. And then, the story of two firefighters who loved the same woman that ended in tragedy, and the crime was all caught on camera. Get rid of his scary mysteries, twisted news. Number one, the mysterious death of Officer John O'Keefe. If you live in the Boston area, then you've undoubtedly heard about this case. The tragic story of police officer John O'Keefe, who was found dead underneath freshly fallen snow outside of his friend's house. If you don't know about it, we'll get ready for a very polarizing story that literally has divided the entire town of Canton where it occurred. Some are saying that O'Keefe's girlfriend, Karen Reed, is to blame, while others say it's the Thin Blue Line gang sticking together and looking to frame her for something they did. 46-year-old Boston police officer John O'Keefe had lived in Canton, Mass. for the past eight years after moving there to raise his niece and nephew after his sister passed away due to a brain tumor and her husband died just a few months later from a heart attack. For the past two years, he had been in a relationship with a successful woman and Karen, who was 42 years old, and she lived in nearby Mansfield, but spent a lot of time at O'Keefe's, and she liked to help out with the kids. On the night of Friday, January 28, 2022, John, who was off the clock, arrived at C.F. McCarthy's Pub at around 7.30 for a night of drinking and hanging out. And Karen got there about an hour later, they stayed there and drank quite a bit and left a couple hours later to head to the Waterfall Bar and Grill where they ran into Brian Albert, a fellow Boston police officer who was there with his sister-in-law and town selectman brother, Chris. At around midnight when the bar was closing, Brian invited them over to hang out at his place for a bit more. And Karen said she'd bring John there, but that she was headed back to his place to go to bed. So the couple hopped in Reed's SUV, went over to Brian's place where she dropped him off, and this is where the mystery begins. Because apparently, when she drove off, she backed her car into O'Keefe, knocked him out cold, and then just drove away. Now, it was snowing really hard that night, and it wouldn't be until the next morning that the officer's body was found right there in the snow on the lawn. At around 4.30 a.m., Reed woke up to find O'Keefe still wasn't home, so she called around a bit, but no one had seen him. She got some of her friends together, and that's when they pulled up to Brian's house and found O'Keefe in the snow, but it was too late to do anything. Within a few days, Reed would be arrested on suspicion of manslaughter. And pieces of her broken taillight were found at the scene, and damage to the back of her SUV showed she certainly hit something. However, there's some serious questions about all this, and things just don't seem to add up all that simply. For one, O'Keefe's autopsy isn't consistent with having been hit with a car at all and then left in that snow. The medical examiner noted two swollen black eyes, a small cut above O'Keefe's right eye, cut on his nose, a laceration to the back of his head, and multiple skull fractures that caused bleeding of the brain as well as abrasions on his right arm. In other words, it looked like he had been beaten up pretty severely. And those pieces of the taillight found at the scene, well, it's curious how they got there because there's actually surveillance footage from Reed's home on the morning she went to look for her boyfriend. And panicked and probably still a little intoxicated, she should never have been driving, but she backed into a parked car there, which is where the cracked light happened. It was said that the pieces of the light found at the scene of the crime were on top of the fresh snow that had fallen, which didn't make sense. When you find out that Detective Michael Proctor, who was good friends with the Alberts, was in charge of the investigations, things start to get murky. That thin blue line sticking together starts to shine. Those abrasions on O'Keefe's arm looked consistent with the bite mark of a dog. 
The Alberts happen to own a German shepherd who was rehoused shortly after the whole incident took place. On top of that, the Alberts also sold their home soon after this incident. So, is it possible a fight broke out there? The German shepherd got involved and then O'Keefe was left out in the elements to die. Well, yes, it certainly is. The FBI recently said the damage to Reed's SUV was inconsistent with hitting a person. And in terms of motive with regards to a fight breaking out at Brian Albert's house, apparently his nephew Colin was at the house the night of the party and him and O'Keefe had a history of not getting along. Now, there really is a lot more to this case once you really dig in, but those are the main facts that we're looking at currently. This case is ongoing, but all throughout Mass, there's support for Karen Reed, even the billboards that read Free Karen. It's a wild story and very fitting for Boston's history of these kinds of incidents, and soon the prosecution will present its side in June, so we'll see how it all goes down. It's politics, it's generations of families with members inside law enforcement, and it's a night of partying gone wrong one way or another. So hopefully, the jury gets it right. There's no doubt there will be one heck of a Netflix documentary on the whole thing someday soon. Number two, the fire inside. If you're out there going through a rough patch in the world of love and dating, Just remember that there are plenty of fish in the sea. I know it doesn't feel like that, but I promise you, it's just because our worlds are small, so it's hard to see. But with billions of people on the planet, there's another one out there for you, so don't go letting your emotions get the best of you like the guy in this story did. In October of 2017, Baltimore firefighter, 31-year-old John Hickey met a girl named J.M., and the two hit it off. Within a month, they were officially dating, but then, out of nowhere, it appeared like John had ghosted her. They didn't have a fight, nothing had seemingly felt off, but for two days, J.M. couldn't reach John. She drove by his place a few times and noticed his car hadn't moved and wasn't answering the door, so she finally called the police to do a welfare check, and they headed over. Inside, that's where they found John lying on his couch, lifeless with a single bullet wound to the head. It was clearly a case of murder, but who did it and why? Luckily for John, he had exterior surveillance cameras of his house, and and looking through the footage, that's when they found it. A man wearing a hoodie outside his window in the dead of night, pacing back and forth as if giving himself a pump-up speech about how he had to go in there and take John out. Eventually, he goes in through the window. JW was shown the footage and she immediately identified it to be Daniel Green, a firefighter himself and JW's ex. And they had a very on and off relationship for several months, mainly because Green was married at the time, but she broke it off in October before dating John and apparently, according to prosecution, that was just too much for Daniel to take and, enraged, he wanted to get his revenge. Police seized Green's laptop, where there, they found that he had recently looked up John and his address on East Pratt Street. At trial, the defense tried to argue that J.M. initially wasn't sure that she identified Daniel from the footage, but you and I both know if you saw a significant other on a video, you could identify them because you know their movements and mannerisms and just the way they walk. They then worked to paint a picture that the police only looked at Green and no one else and that this was shoddy police work. But in the end, Green was convicted, sent to jail for life plus 20 years. This case shows us what can happen when obsession and jealousy takes hold, so if you ever find yourself feeling those emotions, just take a deep breath and know that one day, those feelings will go away. So there were two of the scariest and strange stories that we have for you this week. I'm Andrew. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one.